Well, hello and welcome to the virtual presentation of Forsyth Church of Christ on our Sunday morning. We're glad you're here. Uh, I'm glad you've chosen to be here uh, with us. My name is Daniel Kirkendall. I'm the Associate Minister at Forsyth and this is John Dobbs. He's the Pulpit Minister. I'm so glad that you, uh, again, decided to be here. We do want to interact with you. We don't want to just present and there be this uh, separation between us. We want to interact with you. We want to know who you are, where you're from. So if you're visiting us for the first time or you know, you're from somewhere outside of the Monroe area, feel free to say, hello, I'm, from, you know, I'm watching from, from Memphis or Dallas or wherever it is uh, that you're from. For our, uh, for our members here, it's, we miss having you at church and I hope things are going well uh, for you. Throughout the, the sermon and the communion time, uh, you feel free to use the like buttons, uh, share this video to your friends who may need uh, some encouragement or something, something positive this time of year, uh, so you can share that. And you can definitely engage in the comments throughout with an amen, praise God, uh, you know, I'm listening you know, from, from so-and-so. Preach so, it, brother. That's right. That's it right there. <laughs> so that's what we want to hear from you. So one more time, thank you for being here. Um, hope everything's going well. Yes, and we are glad you're here. We want to uh, invite your attention to our website at facoc.org, a place where you can communicate directly with us on the communications tab. Just click on that tab and there's a drop down place for you to reach out to us uh, and it'll only be seen by the church office. It won't be public. So we invite you to do that. Uh, we are also always willing to, uh, to hear your prayer requests and to add them to our prayer lists and and our elders meet on Wednesdays and pray together, and we'll be glad to add your request into that prayer time. I do want to encourage you, if you're watching on Facebook at this moment, to make sure that you have liked 
the Forsyth Church of Christ page. That gives uh, you the opportunity to get a notification when we put something new. And we often share our church bulletin and church news and updates and things there. So if you are uh, watching on the Forsyth Church of Christ page, Uh, or somewhere else and want to go there and make sure that you like that page. If you're watching on YouTube, and some of you are, and we thank you for that, be sure to subscribe there so you can also get notifications. And it helps us to have subscribers on YouTube and Facebook as well. So thank you for doing those things for us. It's uh, something we can't do for ourselves. We have to depend on people to do that for us. I want to encourage you that... Uh, We are meeting virtually right now as you're watching, but also on campus at Forsyth Church of Christ, 2101 Forsyth Avenue in Monroe. And we would love for you to come and join us. We are uh, social distanced and wearing masks to and from our seats. And so uh, we would love for you to come and and participate with us. We could uh, say hello from a few feet away and just let you know how glad we are to meet you. We are going to take communion in just a few minutes following the sermon, so if you have those elements, you might want to have them nearby. We've been talking, uh, starting through a series of messages through the book of Luke, and we're still in chapter 1. We talked last week a little bit about John the Baptist and the amazing story that uh, he has and his his birth story. And so uh, we do know that the holidays uh, are not really about John the Baptist. They're about Jesus. And so we want to talk to you uh, this morning a little bit from Luke 1, uh, this idea, you're to call him Jesus. And one of the things I notice about the Christmas season is that it's easy for us to just kind of assume we, we know the story, we know how it goes, and, and we can overlook some of the common elements of the Chris, Christmas story. And I think there's tragedy in that. I think we ought to spend a few minutes really looking at it again, refreshing not only our our minds and our memories, but also uh, not losing a sense of wonder about this beautiful, wonderful event. And today I want to focus in a little bit on Mary. Now, we truthfully know very little about Mary, the mother of Jesus, uh, in a, a lesson book I found, Lottie Beth Hobbs wrote this, that Mary holds a place apart from all women in the world, a position never before known, and one which will never again be filled. Who was the young woman selected by God to be the mother of the Messiah? Her parentage is not given. She's evidently a very humble station in life. And she goes on to make a lot of points about Mary's life and what we know, but, but really, we don't know that much. There's a popular holiday song I bet you've already heard it, called Mary, Did You Know? I remember the first time I heard that song, I thought, wow, this is an amazing song. Now, on the 5,000th time I've heard it, I might not have that same feeling, but it is a great song. And I think about that. I'd like to turn it around a little bit, though, and wonder about the Mary we need to know. I want to start off with the mythology of Mary, because Mary was an extraordinary young woman, but Sometimes there are teachings about her in the religious world that we can't find in the Bible. For instance, some people believe that that Mary never sinned, that not even the slightest transgression, that she lived a perfect life and that she had never sinned. Some people believe that Mary remained a virgin throughout all of her life, even after her marriage to Joseph. Some religions teach that Mary is a mediator between God and man, that we should pray to her, and they believe that Mary prays for us along with her son Jesus. And some believe that Mary ended her earthly life by being taken up to heaven in bodily form. Now, uh, we may disagree with our religious friends on some of those matters like these, but I do want to affirm two things. And one is, all of our information about Mary should come from the Bible. Because, honestly, we don't have any other resources about her life as it was genuinely lived. And a second thing I want to affirm is that we don't want to exalt Mary above the station that's given to her in the Bible, but we don't want to downplay the significance of her life either. We're, we don't want to lose balance here. And so I want us to think about Mary. I want us to look at Luke chapter 1. And I have some selected scriptures here. Basically, we're going to be between 
uh, verse 26 and 56. Here's the reading. So God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. And you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. And he'll be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And Mary answered, I am the Lord's servant. May your word be to me, uh, your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. And so we think about this amazing story. There's so many things we can see here, and I want to mention just a few about the Mary that we see in Scripture, not the mythology that we hear about, but what does the Scripture show us about Mary? And one thing we know is that Mary was an ordinary young woman. Uh, Mary was the most common name. Uh, it was the com- most, most common Jewish name for women at the, that time in the land of Israel. She was an ordinary teenager, likely a young teenager, who had a world-changing conversation with the angel Gabriel. Now, I think about that contrast. That here's this, uh, this teenage girl who's going about her business, but she has this amazing conversation with one of the only two angels in the Bible that are even named. And it was through this amazing experience that she learned about her role to play in the coming of Christ. Now, you would think that might make her a little proud about who she is, that she was chosen. But the truth is, as we look at Mary's story and read through it and see who she really is, that this did not change her humble demeanor. She acknowledges herself as lowly, in need of a Savior, and yet she confessed that she was blessed beyond all the generations. She, in other words, was a strong person who did not become arrogant. Elizabeth Elliot says about Mary that she was strong enough and holy enough to recognize her place under God and thoughts of what people would say, what Joseph, her fiancé, would say, or how she would ever convince them that she had not been unfaithful were instantly set aside because she knew who she was in God and what God had said to her. So Mary, she was a pretty ordinary young woman, but she was also a believer. She believed in the Lord. She believed that God had the power to fulfill the promises that he was making to her. And Mary submitted herself to God. She said, let it be to me according to your word. And so she just says to God, this is your plan, and I'm going to submit to that. Mary was redeemed. God, the Gabriel said that Mary was highly favored and blessed, and the Lord was with her. And one of the things I want to note about Mary is that she plays this significant role in the beginning of the life of Jesus. We see her here and there. We see her at the cross. And we also see Mary uh, after the resurrection. Mary's an integral part of the early church, part of a prayer ministry in the upper room just before the day of Pentecost. It says Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there among them praying. And that's the last thing I want to mention about Mary is that Mary is the mother of Jesus. That word Jesus is such an important word. It was such a common name. It was one of the most common names for males in the land of Israel at the time. But the angel said, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you're to call him Jesus. In, In Hebrew and Aramaic, it's related to a phrase that says, the Lord saves. And Apostle Peter would later say in Acts chapter 4 that salvation is found in no one else for there's no other name uh, under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. And so it is the saving power of Jesus. That is the, that, that name just brings to mind the truth that we needed to be saved and he came to save us. 
And there are several names given to Jesus in this chapter that we don't think about or talk about a whole lot. One is the Son of the Most High. Uh, one of them is the Horn of Salvation. And then there's one that appears only in Luke chapter 1, verse 78, the rising sun, or as the King James Version has it, day spring. It kind of gives the idea of a cosmic appearance of Christ as the light of the world. You know, when I think about what we know about Mary and as we study about Mary, it's, it's worthwhile to learn all we can. It's, it's, it's not, uh, she's an important figure and we shouldn't just rush over or just, um, just not think about her. We need to remember this was a very special person, a remarkable woman an important woman in history, but also one who left us a godly example. And we don't worship Mary, and we shouldn't worship Mary, but I do believe we can learn a lot from her life. We can believe in the word of the Lord. We can believe that he keeps his promises. We can trust God and submit to him. We can choose to worship God even in tough times. Those are things that we see displayed in the life of Mary. Now, one of the things about this chapter is there are two songs here, a song from Zechariah that we talked about last week and a song from Mary. Uh, it's often called the Magnificat, which is Latin for my soul magnifies the Lord. That's how that song begins. And I took the liberty of editing it just a bit so we could use it as a responsive reading this morning. I apologize for that. Uh, so we could use this as a responsive reading this morning. And I want to uh, do that. And I'm going to ask Daniel to, to read the role of the congregation. And it's going to be on screen, so I want you to read the role of the congregation. And we'll do this together wherever we are, all over the place, and, uh, and, and read through this song together. Okay, you ready? All right, so the L is my part and the C is your part. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. God has been mindful of us. The Mighty One has done great things for us. Holy is His name. His mercy extends to those who fear Him. From generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with His arm. And he has scattered those who are proud. He has brought down rulers from their thrones. And he has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things. He has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel. He remembers to be merciful just as he promised. Amen. Amen. I think about that, and I just love the expressions there. And I hope you'll go back and read that song of Mary and contemplate a little bit and, and, and just think about how it could fit into your prayer life as well. But I want to encourage you, uh, in the spirit of what we know about Mary, to be a follower and a believer of Jesus Christ, to be someone who's submitted and given your life to him, to hear and believe the word of the Lord, that when you read something in scripture, that it becomes your primary source of what you believe, to not only believe, but to trust that God keeps his promises, and to submit to the Lord in repentance and baptism, to, to give your life to God, and to follow Jesus your entire life. And when I think about our entire life and following after Jesus, that to me is a part of what communion about, is about. In the churches of Christ, we partake of communion every week, and you've noticed that if you've been watching our videos and you might not know very much about the Church of Christ. But that's part of our tradition, our belief that this is what God wants us to do, that when we gather together as his family on Sunday mornings, that we remember what Jesus has done, not only what he did at the cross, but what he is doing right now in our life and what he will do when he returns. And so as we partake of this communion together, I hope you'll think about some of those things and, uh, and I pray that we'll, we'll uh, experience some union here as we gather around the table of the Lord, even though we're in various places. There are Christians all over the world partaking of communion today and so we are in unity with them. So I ask you to pray with me and then we're going to have a song, and then Daniel's going to come and, and close us out. Thank you so much for, for being here with us today. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for the beautiful example in life of Mary. And even though we don't know a whole lot about her, we know the most important significant event of her life, that she gave birth to Jesus, our Savior. 
And we ask you, Father, to help us to have that submissive spirit that Mary had, that whatever it is God calls us to do, that's what we'll do. As we remember what Jesus did in redeeming us and dying on the cross, his body and blood represented in bread and wine. I pray, Father, that as we commune in this moment, that you'll help us to recommit ourselves to you and to reconsider all of our ways and put our trust in you fully. And thank you for this opportunity. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song. You are good, good. Oh, 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 let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails. The anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins. The echo of my days, oh, he is my song. You are good, good, oh, you are good. Thank you, John, for a wonderful message on uh, on Jesus, looking at it through the eyes of his mother, uh, Mary. That was John Dobbs, our preaching minister. And again, my name is Daniel Kirkendall. I'm the associate minister here at Forsyth Church of Christ. And I speak on behalf of John and everyone else here at Forsyth when I say thank you for uh, choosing to be here to watch these videos. We are gathering on Sunday mornings, and, and so this video will go live at the same time that we're in person at the church building at 2101 Forsyth Avenue. And so we want to offer um, as much convenience to those who are not comfortable gathering uh, as much as we can. So we hope you, um, you enjoy it and you're able to, to gather something from it to help in your daily life. Again, I encourage you to go to facoc.org. You can give online there. If you have prayer, uh, you know, a prayer request or a physical need, we can help you with that. Also, just go to the communications tab. I'll say a prayer, and then we'll close out for the day. Dear God, thank you so much for everything that you give us. Thank you for the blessing of your Son coming down to earth to live a perfect life so that we could be redeemed. And as we enter this Christmas and this holiday season, may our minds go to, uh, to the cross, to the manger, uh, to the tomb. Help 
help us to continually think about how we can serve you, how we can glorify your name and all that we do. I pray for all those who have um, family and friends who are sick right now, who are dealing with uh, the coronavirus or with cancer or whatever else it is that's, that's plaguing their bodies right now. I pray that you heal them. I pray that you be with their families and the people who are uh, missing the time together while they're uh, fighting a disease. Lord, we love you, and it's in your son's name I pray. Amen. Sweetest friend.